there is a controversial but growing trend of single Western men moving to Southeast Asia to find wives, girlfriends, or just casual hookups. My name is Alan, I've been living in Cambodia for over a year, and I recently got engaged to the sweetest, most beautiful woman in the world. I'm gonna tell you everything that you need to know about dating in these Southeast Asian countries based on my own personal dating experience, as well as what I've learned from talking to other expats. What is the appeal of dating here? Why is it so controversial? And what do you need to know if you want to do it yourself? Firstly, a big part of why men are leaving the West to go to Southeast Asia is the lack of satisfaction with dating in the West. People are getting married less often, they're getting divorced more often, and there is a troubling phenomenon that some refer to as a loneliness epidemic. In particular, young men are finding it increasingly difficult to get a life partner or even just a simple date. Data from dating apps shows a sort of Pareto effect going on where 80% of women are going after the most desirable 20% of men. Admittedly, I can personally relate to this. I am what most people would consider just an average guy. I'm in decent shape, but I don't have a six pack. I'm financially well off, but I'm not driving a Lamborghini. And my hobbies are things like computers and gaming. So I am certainly not a ladies man or a pickup artist. So in America, I continually struggled with trying to appeal to women and present myself as the kind of fun, sexy guy that a woman would really want to go out with. Now, why go to Southeast Asia? Well, if you don't like the dating culture in the West, Southeast Asia is literally the furthest thing from that. This region of the world is known for its especially friendly people, and of course, that does include the women. And the cynicism that is so prevalent in Western dating culture is completely absent in this part of the world. The women, they want to meet new people, they want to go out on dates, and they want to find a husband. And of course, there's broad agreement among men that women in Cambodia and Thailand are much more attractive in both looks and personality on average than women in the West. On the other side of the coin, as a Western man here in Southeast Asia, your value on the dating market is leagues higher than it would be in your home country. Some women here actually perceive these men as being more attractive and better husband material than the local men. After I moved over here to Cambodia, it was an entirely different dating experience. And I'm honestly not trying to brag, but I just had attractive women lining up to date me to a degree that absolutely never would have happened in America. This also had the effect of boosting my confidence and making me less nervous on those dates that I was going on. Now, why is all of this controversial? For many reasons, people hold the view that a relationship between a foreign guy and an Asian woman is somehow less legitimate and that people are being taken advantage of in one way or another. So on one hand, you have some people saying that these Western men are preying upon the women by dating them as if they have no choice in the matter. This sort of goes along with the commonly held worldview that Western men are oppressors and that we are somehow harming society by coming here to date them. Then on the other hand, you have some people who will express skepticism at the idea that women really love these guys that they are dating with rather than just being in the relationship in order to upgrade their standard of living. Obviously, yes, this can happen, but of course it can happen in the West too. If you just exercise a little bit of common sense, I think it should be fairly obvious whether the woman that you're with is just in it for the money or if she's with you because she likes you for you. And although people don't want to admit it, I really believe that a big portion of this backlash just comes from good old fashioned classism and racism. There are plenty of folks that just believe that people are better off dating someone from within their own race, class, and country of origin. And I have gotten comments along the lines of, Oh, you're with an Asian woman, huh? Are you saying American girls aren't good enough for you? And I definitely feel like there's some resentment of the fact that you're escaping the Western dating system, so to speak. 
people almost kind of feel like you're using a cheat code of sorts. Because of the fact that these young guys have such a hard time dating in the West, there's now become this big industry of giving them advice to become so-called high-value males. You have all of these alpha bro types on social media saying things like, oh yeah, man, you gotta hit the gym every day, you gotta triple your income, you gotta talk this way, and so on. But I don't really think the message of, oh, just change yourself completely and you'll get more dates really resonates with most people, right? Maybe you don't need to change yourself, you need to change your environment. Rather than trying to change yourself into a person that women value, instead, why not go someplace where you're more likely to find a woman that values you for who you are? If dating is, as some people say, a numbers game, then why wouldn't you want those numbers to be more in your favor? Life does have some shortcuts, and I believe that there is no shame in just taking them. Now, what should you know if you want to move to Southeast Asia and get involved in dating here? First, I'll just tell you what you shouldn't do. Don't buy a flight to Bangkok, stay there for a month, find some random woman that you seem to like, and just bring her back to your country and get married. At that point, you're basically just getting a mail order bride. Unsurprisingly, I advocate the approach that I took, which is to stay in Southeast Asia long term because you like the culture and the cost of living. Take some time to get settled in and then start dating. If you fall in love with the lifestyle of Southeast Asia the way that I did, then it won't be hard for you to find a woman to fall in love with as well. As far as how to meet women, there are two approaches that you can take. For more extroverted people, I think you will find it very easy to just talk to the women that you see while you're out and about in your day-to-day -day life. It's very easy to just talk about things like where you're from, ask her what she likes to do for fun, and then ask her out on a date. Some of them will even ask you out. I've actually known plenty of guys that have just started chatting to a woman at a shop or something, and she just comes out and says, oh, hey, I'd like to get to know you and maybe cook you dinner sometime. People are very friendly here, so no one is going to get upset if you ask them out. And if they do reject you, it'll usually be because they just already have a husband or a boyfriend. And they're not going to be a jerk about it at all. They'll just say something like, oh, thank you, but I already have a husband. Personally, I just use Tinder to meet new people, and it does have a different reputation than that app has in the West. It's actually viewed as a legitimate and effective way to meet someone to start a long-term relationship, not as a hookup app. Being a Western app, most of the women using it will speak good English and be pretty familiar with Western culture already. And some of them will be there specifically because they're looking to date a foreigner. If you're a decent looking Western guy who has some experience using these dating apps, I estimate that you will be able to get a new first date about every one to two weeks. The only issue that I experienced is that at a certain point you will run out of women to swipe on unless you live in a dense city like Bangkok or Phnom Penh. I will briefly mention that if you're just looking for a hookup with a local woman, just stay away from the apps. And I say this because if Western men start using these apps to manipulate women into sleeping with them, that ruins the experience for obviously the women there, but also the men because then foreign men will develop this reputation of being sleazy. Unlike in the West, realize that there are plenty of services that cater towards men that are just looking for sex, like girly bars, and there's honestly no shame in using them. The men who are only looking for sex can get what they want and no one's heart gets broken. A few dating tips that I have while you're here. Firstly, if you can learn a little bit of the local language, I do think it helps. It shows the women that you are willing to put some effort into the relationship and integrate into their culture. Even if it's only a few basic sentences, it's better than nothing. Secondly, I find that people are more open with their feelings here. In Western dating, there's sort of this view that you shouldn't come on too strong and that you should almost try to give off the impression that you have other options. Here, women really like romance and they want to feel special. 
So if you do something like send a text that says, good morning, beautiful, that won't come off as clingy. It'll actually come off as really sweet. Now, as far as staying with someone for the long term, I think your biggest consideration needs to be the values of the person that you're with. Now, generally, women here are more traditional and less modern than women in the West, but everyone is different. Personally, I was trying to go for women that aren't at either extreme of the traditional to modern spectrum. You know, I'm not looking for a woman who's going to stay home all day and take care of the kids, but I also wasn't looking for a woman who was dyeing her armpit hair purple either. So before you rush into anything, I think it's really important that you make sure that your values and expectations align with that person that you want to be with. I hope that provides you with enough information to decide if dating in Southeast Asia is right for you. But of course, the main reason that I moved to Cambodia was not for the women, but for the incredibly low cost of living. So if you want to see how cheap it is to live in Cambodia, then go watch this video right here.